book of Deuteronomy. When Moses had finished speaking to all Israel, he said to them, I am now 120 years old and am no longer able to move about freely. Besides, the Lord has told me that I shall not cross this Jordan. It is I, the Lord your God, who will cross before you. He will destroy these nations before you, that you may supplant them. It is Joshua who will cross before you, as the Lord promised. The Lord will deal with them just as he dealt with Sion and Og, the king of the Amorites, whom he destroyed, and with their country. When, therefore, the Lord delivers them up to you, you must deal with them exactly as I have ordered you. Be brave and steadfast. Have no fear or dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who marches with you. He will never fail you or forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and in the presence of all Israel said to him, Be brave and steadfast, for you must bring this people into the land which the Lord swore to their fathers he would give them. You must put them in possession of the heritage. It is the Lord who marches before you. He will be with you and will never fail you or forsake you. So do not fear or be dismayed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The portion of the Lord is his people. The portion of the Lord is his people. For I will sing the Lord's renown, O proclaim the greatness of our God, the rock, how faultless are his deeds, how right are his ways. The portion, the portion of the, the Lord, Lord is his people. Think back on the days of old, reflect on the years of age upon age, ask your father and he will inform you, ask your elders and they will tell you. The portion, the portion of, of the Lord, Lord is, is his people. people. When the Most High assigned the nations their heritage, when he parceled out the descendants of Adam, he set up the boundaries of the peoples after the number of sons of Israel. The portion, the portion of, the of the Lord, Lord is, is his people. people. While the Lord's own portion was Jacob, his hereditary share was Israel. The Lord alone was their leader. No strange God was with him. The, the portion, portion of the Lord is, is his people. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia. Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child over, placed it in their midst, and said, Amen, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. See that you did not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that their angels in heaven always look upon the face of my heavenly Father. What is your opinion? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, will he not leave the ninety-nine in the hills and go in search of the stray? And if he finds it, amen, I say to you, he rejoices more over it than over the ninety-nine that did not stray. In just the same way, it is not the will of your heavenly Father that one of these little ones should be lost. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> just a very brief reflection on our scripture reading from Deuteronomy and really the context of much of the book of Deuteronomy, the code of the law that was discovered in the temple, as we think anyhow, during the reforms in the 7th century B.C., under the king Josiah. And what does this book actually tell us? It tells us all about God's initiative. It is God who loved his people, 
God's portion is his people. God does these things out of love for his people. There's the initiative of love that Deuteronomy celebrates. What is our appropriate response then? Love and respect in return. And so what the book of Deuteronomy, the second law, as the name actually is translated, the second law is all about is the celebration of this love relationship, which is what covenant means. And so God acts taking the initiative. God reaches out to his people and then hopes for the response that is a response of love. And isn't that that's the same with all of us in all the relationships we have where we, we, we have a hard time somehow sometimes saying yes to somebody who says that they love us. No, they don't love us. They don't love me. Not if they really knew, you know, all the things you can fill in the blank with. We have a hard time accepting that. If we were once able to accept love as a free gift that can be freely responded to, we would be so much happier. This would be so much better of a world. So we can ask God to strengthen us, to make us faithful people, to help us to bring that kind of love into the world by responding with a yes to the first yes of God to us. Let us stand and pray.